Hey everyone, and welcome back to the chat. Today we're going to cover Fusion X, which is a fine tune of the popular WAN model, which does some pretty cool things that you should be using if you do any kind of WAN generation. Now, before we get into it, today's tutorial is a comfy UI only tutorial. However, before you click away, I am working on a cloud and G radio solution for this. So do check down in the description below if that's something that you're looking for. I also suggest you stick around as I am going to dive into the model and explain the different components so that you understand what Fusion X is all about. Check out the chapters down below to get to the section that you want if all you want is to understand what Fusion X is. So what actually is Fusion X? It's actually just a merge of several LoRa's that provide quality, performance, and other enhancements and improvements to the WAN model. The creator, VR Game Dev Girl 84 has gone out and put together several of the best LoRa's for WAN that improve image quality, speed, performance, and so on, and merge them all together into a single super lore. She's then gone and actually merged that into the WAN model. So depending on how you want to run your workflow, you can get everything in one model or a LoRa that you add on to whichever WAN model you're using, or even an ingredients workflow that separates all the LoRas so that you can decide which components you want to use. So we're going to explore all of those today. So what are the LoRa's that are actually incorporated into this new Fusion X model? Well, the first one is Cosvin, which incorporates a pre-trained bidirectional diffusion model. If you have no idea what that means, basically what it does is it contributes to bringing the step count down while reducing errors and improving cohesion, which allows us to generate faster and longer videos without the AI going a little bit crazy. However, if you've seen us use cause video in previous videos before, you'll notice that there is a degradation in quality. However, by combining it with these other LoRa's in Fusion X, we actually make up for that and end up with a better looking image than if we had just used cause vid on its own. The other LoRa's are MovieGen, which is a LoRa that brings about aesthetic and image quality improvements, giving videos generated with this a bit more of a cinematic look which once again contributes to quality improvements in particular when you're using humans in your video generation. There's ACC vid, which works on improving motion as well as reducing the amount of time needed for generation, as well as two additional LoRa's that the creator has also created, which help improve details and realism. All of these LoRa's when put together, stack one on top of each other to give you a final result that is significantly better than if you'd use any of these LoRa's on their own or when without any of these LoRa's. On top of that, Fusion X has also been merged into the Vase and Phantom models, allowing you to take advantage of all of these benefits in those versions as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Fusion X comes in three flavors. There's the merge model, where we've got a WAN Fusion X merge, we've got a Phantom Fusion X merge, and we've got a Vase Fusion X merge. However, if you've got an existing workflow and you don't want to swap out the models, or you don't want to have WAN and the Fusion X version of WAN, there is a LoRa version available where it's all of these LoRa's merged together into a super LoRa. So you just slide it into your existing workflow as a LoRa and you're good to go. Finally, if you actually like some of the components but you want to remove others, there is an ingredients version of this workflow which we'll go through as well, where you can pick and choose which LoRa's you want in your final generation. So without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at some of these workflows and how Fusion X works in all of these scenarios. So as usual, I'm running my workflows all on RunPod. However, everything that I cover here, you should be able to do on your local computer, given that you had a powerful enough GPU. If I have time, I will also explore how to make use of GGUF models in case you want to run this on your own 3090, 4090 at home. In case you don't know, RunPod is a platform where you can go out and rent GPUs of different size and power, allowing you to run more powerful models than you would be able to on your local computer. It's extremely cheap as it's just a few dollars an hour, and you're effectively renting a computer that you can run a comfy UI on. I actually have a comfy UI template, and in my template, I have a whole bunch of parameters here where you can set different workflows or nodes to one, and it will automatically install everything that you need to. A WAN Fusion X complete, if you set it to one, it will automatically download all the models and nodes that you need to get up and running quickly. I am also working on a local version of this called Comfy UI Browser. And this will allow you to easily create virtual environments, download workflows, and have all of the nodes and models downloaded and pre-installed to your system, making it incredibly easy to use. 
The goal is to make this available free for everyone in some version, but in the meantime, there will be an early release available exclusively for our patrons. So if you're interested in getting a hold of that, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Coming back to this, if you are using Rampart and you've set this to one, everything that you need should automatically download and install. However, if you're following along at home, what we'll do is we'll go through a bunch of workflows. If you have used WAN before, there should not be anything new here. And if you want to dive deeper into these workflows, I suggest you check out my WAN or WAN vase videos where I dive deeper into the workflows. For today, I'm going to assume that you've got these workflows and we're just going to go through how Fusion X operates a little bit differently. So this over here, Regardless, if you do want a copy of these workflows, they will be available for free down in the links below. And I will have some improved versions available exclusively for Patreon supporters. So over here, we have a standard image to video workflow. We've got our image over here. We resize it to an adequate size over here. We use the Clip Vision encoder for WAN over here along with the Clip Vision H model. And then we feed that into the WAN video image to video encode which then comes into the WAN video sampler. Up here, we've got the WAN video model loader, and this would be the first place where you could come in here and select the WAN 14 billion image to video Fusion X model. If you click that, make sure that you come over here to the LoRa select node and bypass it. However, I also have the regular vanilla 14 billion 720p model, and I'm applying the image to video Fusion X LoRa here. If this were a text to video workflow, which is exactly the same, except that we don't have the input image, you would swap this out for the text to video model and swap this out over here for your vanilla text to video model. That's it. That's all you need to do to get this working. However, there are a few caveats that we need to look at that could present as errors for you. On the default version of this workflow, you will see that we have these torch compile settings. Now, some of the LoRa's incorporated into Fusion X don't work very well with this, depending on the version of torch that you have, as well as the GPU that you have. If you find that you're encountering errors, there's a couple of things that you can do and will work backwards until you just disable this. So typically what you'll find is your base precision by default will be set to FP16 fast. That will only work on the newest GPUs. So if you're having an issue, that would be the first thing that you want to switch to BF16 or FP16. The next area where you might find a problem is if you are using an 8 version of the model, your quantization by default will either be this FP8 E4M3FN or the fast version. Try switching it to the E5N2 version. If you're still getting an error there, at this point, you're better off just bypassing this node and things should work well. You will lose some speed benefits, but I haven't been able to get that particular node working on run, so I just keep it disabled. Another thing you may want to consider is, depending on your installation on my RunPod template, when you select the Fusion X, I install Triton and Sage Attention for you. If you don't have Sage Attention or Triton, you can come up over here to manager and install pip packages. Type in Triton and then type in Sage Attention. Go ahead and confirm and it will install those for you. If you're unable to install them for whatever reason, switch your attention mode over to SDPA. Again, you lose some speed benefits, but you will get it working. I'm typically able to get generations in around 300 to 400 seconds. And that's pretty much it. You can see here the output example of this image to video using Fusion X. And it's almost perfect. I really have almost nothing to complain about here. There's no weirdness. There's no blurring. She is chopping the red peppers a little bit weirdly, but the facial expressions, it's all just really good. I will also throw up here a comparison right now of what this exact same workflow looks like with the vanilla image to video model and the Fusion X version next to it with the same seed so that you can see the massive differences. Now, how about if you want to use this with Vase? Well, I've got a modified version of the Vase workflow over here. We've got our load reference image over here, the control video, the open pose over here. And all we're doing is swapping out our model over here for the Fusion X base version. That's it. That's all you got to do. And the rest of the workflow will work as is. 
And you can see here the output example of the dance video I'm using to test it out. And overall, the quality is very good. There's a little bit of blurring happening over here, but I think that's partly also because I'm putting this together at 16 frames per second. Again, I will run some more experiments and I'll throw those up over here for you to have a look at the different quality variations. Now, if in this scenario, let's say you've already got the WAN base model and you don't want to re-download WAN base because it's like, I think 15 or 20 gigabytes, you can come over here and unbypass the LoRa, leave your base set up over here and just add in the Fusion X text to video mod as Vase uses the text to video WAN mod. Do that, set your strength to one and you should be good to go. Just remember to also drop down your steps to eight to 10 to get the desired result. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the creator did also make available a ingredients version of this workflow. So if we open it up over here, there's two versions, one which uses the Kijai wrapper nose and one which uses the native Comfy UI nose. Now, I personally prefer the wrapper nodes as they have a lot more functionality to them. However, I'll link both of them down below. If we see over here, it's basically just all of the LoRa's feeding one into another. We've got Cosvid, the MPS Reward, ACC Vid, and her own Realism and Detail Enhancers. All of these daisy chain one into another. And one of the reasons you might want to use this is you'll notice here that the strength of each of the LoRa's is different. For example, Cosvid is set to one, Fun is set to 0.5, realism is set to 0.4, and so on. So if you want to tweak and adjust these parameters, you can't do that in the merged version. However, if you just copy paste these nodes into your own workflow or whatever it is that you're using, you can tweak and adjust these to see if you get better results. We can see here that it feeds into this WAN video model loader with the same one that we used before. We have the vanilla image to video 14 billion 720D model. And again, if you are running into issues, make sure you set your FB16 fast to BF16, adjust your quantization. And if you're still having issues, just completely bypass the torch compile settings. Then over here, we've also got the V loaded up, the Clip Vision H, as well as the T5 text encoder. Since we are using the image to video model, we have our image input over here, our prompt over here. The image, of course, goes into the image to video text encoder, the clip text encoders over here, as well as an image resizer. All of that goes into the one video sampler, which acts as our case sampler. Our steps are set to eight, CFG to one, shift to one. The samples go out to a Bay decoder and your output is over here. Nothing too drastic or different. Again, if you want to dive deeper into all of this, I suggest you check out the WAN, VASE, or Phantom videos down below. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty straightforward model to use, allowing you to swap it in with your existing model or workflow to get drastically better results. Now, what if you want to use the GGUF version of the model? Well, it could not be easier. There's a few options available for you. Quantstack has gone ahead and actually made quantized version of the merged model. So we've got here a image to video Fusion X GGUS at different quantization levels. We've got the text to video version over here. He's also gone and done a quantized version of Fusion X base, which is over here as well. So you've got a full set of options, no matter what platform you're on or how you want to use it. Before we finish up, I'll just show you how you can use those quantized versions of the models. And in case you don't know what I'm referring to when I say quantize, quantize basically means it's a watered down version of the model that can run on smaller or less powerful GPUs. To run these models, you need to make sure that you've got the Comfy UI GGUF nodes. If you are running this on RunPod, I will add on GGUF as a parameter here so that if you want those nodes free install, make sure you set it to one and it will be included in your installation. You can go ahead and install this over here. Go ahead and restart. You may need to refresh your browser and to make use of the GGUF version of the models, you just need to make sure that you download them to your Comfy UI models and Diffusion models folder. Now, because we are using a different loader, I'm not sure that the WAN video wrapper node will work. Check over here if you can see the GGUM option. Otherwise, you will need to use the native version of the workflow. Again, which will be included down below. You will need to use the GGUF native version of the workflow. Go ahead and drag that in and you'll see here the unit loader for GGUF 
clip loader, load bay, and so on. You'll also see here that because we're not using the WAN loader, we'll have to load in the Sage Attention and Triton separately if you have them installed. As I mentioned earlier, if you are unable to install them or don't have them installed, make sure you bypass these nodes. Beyond that, everything is pretty standard. You've got your prompts over here, your case sampler over here, your load image over here, along with the image to video encoder and your clip H over here. Now, in this version of the workflow, it's the ingredients one, so you've got the LoRa's all over here. However, you can choose to skip all of this and simply just load up the quantum stack combined GUF model and everything else should work exactly the same. If you did find this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And if you really want to support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Like I said, I've got this comfy UI browser coming out soon and it will become available first and foremost to Patreons. And once I work on it or I come up with a free version, I will make it available to everyone. Alternatively, you can also check out my image and video generation platform, KaijuGen, where I do have the full version of Wine and Base on there and I am working on getting Fusion X as well. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys on the next one.